<laughs> mm, okay. Uh, good morning, Revolution. Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, one and all. Uh, welcome to this week. We're very happy to have you here today. Lots been going on, Scott, over the course of the uh, last week. Yeah, you and Shelby, uh, I saw a picture of you guys in Chicago at the Refounding Conference, the National Alliance. I was in the Windy City uh, last uh, Friday, Saturday, uh, as you said, for the founding, refounding convention of a uh, civil rights uh, pol uh, anti-political repression group called the National Alliance. Its name is associated with uh, the name of uh, Angela Davis, of course. Uh, but they conducted a whole number of struggles around uh, around political repression of uh, voting rights. Uh, they were instrumental in getting uh, the Reverend Benjamin uh, Chavis and the Wilmington 10 uh, oh, wow. released in the famous case and so on and so forth. And it looks like their major uh, issue now is uh, community control of police. That's uh, that's one of the big issues. Yes. And it couldn't. The alliance couldn't have been founded at a better time, you know, what with all of the uh, anti-immigrant racism coming from the White House, all of the uh, police attacks, murders of young black and brown men and women, um, couldn't couldn't have happened at a better time. There were about I don't know, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred oh, people wow. present at the founding. That's great. Mainly young, uh, you know, multiracial, uh, from I think you know, 25, 30 states around the around the country. Um, Good representation uh, of of sort of mass organizations, uh, labor, things like that. Yes, yes, there were labor unions present, uh, churches, um, groups uh, dealing with the issue of uh, students. Um, you know, you name it, they were there and they were ready and willing to fight. There was such a strong atmosphere, protest uh, atmosphere at that convention. It was um, something to see. Well, that's, that, that's terrific. And, and you know, I'm, I'm really glad that, that our party could uh, be a part of it. Um, and, you know, we certainly look forward to, to participating in this work. It's great. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we are joining together with any and everybody who is ready and willing to uh, fight for basic democratic rights and uh, liberties. But some of the things that the uh, Alliance is putting forward are a little bit more than um, basic. You know, you might want to call them advanced democratic uh, demands, like they want to abolish the police departments. Hello? Or um, are, uh, there's police abolition. There's also the demand for uh, to put the, the police under civilian control. Uh, yeah. The fights around that in Chicago, um, yes. which, which would be a huge, um, I mean, it, it's sort of logical when you think about it. These are people who are authorized to carry weapons and use lethal force supposedly on behalf of the people. Um, you know, according to their uh, whatever um, way of, of messaging things. Um, so if that's the case, they should be under the control of the people, under election yeah. control and not, you know, uh, old boys club, um, you know, ex-cops reviewing cops for It's going to take some doing to get there, uh, you can imagine, because up until this point, the uh, main demand has been civilian review, mm -hmm. you know? And the boards are largely appointed by the mayor, you mm -hmm. know, so um, they don't, many of them don't come from the community, you know, um, uh, they, they're kind of hand-picked. Uh, but now they're uh, taking the demand uh, to another level. They're saying, we don't want just to review we want control, we want authority. We want to make sure that the uh, people being uh, served are ordinary working class people. Uh, Which is the echo of the, the, the broader democratic demand in society. We don't just want to have a, you know, a say in, in, in choosing 
people that are going to rule us, the people want to effectively control this country. It's a democracy, that's how it's supposed to work. Uh, you took the word right out of my mouth, democratically control, you know? Um, and that means being part of a collective decision-making process. They're also calling for, get this, the abolition of prisons. Yes. You know, um, get rid of the cops, get rid of the prisons. So what do you do with people, you know, uh, who commit felonies? How, how do you handle that kind of a situation? Now, some, might say that that's a pipe dream, Scott. It's utopian, wish list. It ain't never going to happen. How would you respond? I, mean, I would say, first of all, that unless we frame our demands around a society without prisons and without police violence, um, we're always going to find ourselves relying on that kind of violence. Mm. Um, uh, if, if you take the uh, schools, for example, mm -hmm. um, the public schools have been uh, transformed into a kind of appendage of of the prison state. They're you like know, a warehouse, like well, a warehouse, and also like a well. You've heard of the school to prison pipeline. So there's this mm -hmm. this thought that the solution to everything is more force, more intimidation, more cops, more you know jails, more punishment. And that we have to break out of that logic because it doesn't work. You cannot build a, a stable, prosperous, democratic, sustainable society through fear and intimidation. Um, so regardless of the difficulties involved um, and, and what you know, a, a society without prisons might, you know, I think we have to figure out how to rely on something other than um, police and prisons to now if you don't have prisons and you don't have the police does that mean that you don't have the state anymore does is that like a uh, you know socialism slash communism is, is it's so a, a fully realized um uh, like state with no prisons and and no police and no no state violence and therefore no no state no classes would be communism um, so in a certain sense, uh, the, you know, ask, uh, demanding the abolition of the police and the abolition of prisons is saying, it is putting things in the very long-term perspective of communism. Mm, uh, and the question is, how do we, how do we get there? How from this, you know, violently unequal, vicious capitalist system that we have, how can we get to that, to where we want to be? Well, I think that there's a video uh, on our Facebook page that was put out by the uh, Northern California District of the Party. They had an event a couple of weeks ago called The End of the Police. And if you want to look, uh, look into that situation a little bit more, please check out the uh, video. Uh, I think it was posted about two weeks ago, Scott. Yeah. Uh, and it's up there and ready to see Speaking of the state and the uh, government, um, the impeachment hearings have uh, reached a new stage. And I think next week, um, they're going to begin more formal proceedings. The, the, yeah, the, isn't the, the next step right is to, um, they're, they're right now deliberating on um, what articles of impeachment, if any, to issue. Hmm. Um, uh, and I believe- well, I mean, they they always they have the option. They have the option of not of taking all the testimony they've heard and saying, well, you know, maybe not. Um, I don't think they're going to. I think there will certainly be articles of impeachment. Um, On what subjects? Uh, anyone's guess. Um, probably the, the quid pro quo. Um, mm -hmm. The um, the quid pro who. <laughs> The, 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 well, the, the demand that, um, extortion, the extortion, basically. Mm -hmm. Although, honestly, on this, this Ukraine question, you know, I think we have to be wary of falling into the, the messaging trap that, that's being presented. Mm -hmm. Um, what is happening in Ukraine between the, the partisans of the, the former president and, 
and the current one, um, it, it's an, it's a, an intra-imperialist rivalry. Um, there's a, you know, Russia is uh, relying on or building support among ethnic Russians in Ukraine um, and trying to keep Ukraine in the, the Russian orbit. Um, the EU and the United States uh, and NATO are trying to uh, drag Ukraine into the uh, US Europe orbit. Yeah. Uh, and the, the- What does that got to do with the deal me making now? I mean- the, 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 So the, the, I mean, it's, I think it's a, a, what the US ruling class typically does is select, you know, um, someone that says, oh, this is, this is a pro-democracy uh, faction. And this is a, you know, corrupt, uh, oligarchic, anti-democratic, whatever. The, the current regime in, in Kiev is no more democratic and probably no less corrupt than the previous one. It, so the question is that, the relevant question is that Trump um, did something that was far outside of the bounds of his role as president. He did it uh, for his own political gain um, and he needs to be held accountable. Um, okay, so that's like a national security interference uh, no, not in even, not our even, not internal even, affairs kind of uh, issue, don't you think? I don't, I you think- You don't buy the national security issue? I don't, I don't really buy that. No, I think that there's there's been, one of the manifestations of the, um, the power of the right wing in the United States uh, is that under Trump, even the resistance to Trump, even a lot of the, the liberals have, have gotten dragged into this really neoconservative foreign policy. Um, so it's like watching, um, you know, so we, we see all the, the fear mongering about China, um, the- uh, Well, let's, let's, let's stick with you, you, Ukraine because we're trying to identify- yeah, what, what I'm saying is I think that, that the, even uh, a lot of the um, ruling class forces in the Democratic Party are, have become increasingly hawkish around this question. Um, I, so I would prefer to focus on what um, Trump did, his, his corruption, his lying, his effort to obscure this, rather than framing this as, you know, oh, our national security is under attack, et cetera. Okay, but that's what they're saying, though. I mean, you know, whether it is, but I don't think it right. or not is another issue. Um, but that's what they're saying. They're saying that that, that uh, national security is a issue because he went and asked the president of another country to get dirt on his political opponent. And you're right, there are, you know, there's like this inner imperialist rivalry going on, uh, but we're trying to understand it on its own terms. So that may be one issue. So I what, what I would ask is, what, what would minute, be... Let me just finish this thought. And then the other issue uh, might be um, uh, not uh, obfuscation, but obstruction. Obstruction of uh, they were trying to hide something. And that, that for me is a much more serious. Hmm. Uh, the, the idea that um, the president can uh, just, first of all, at will um, decide that any of his communications can be taken off the record and stored on these super secret servers, mm. um, that his officials are um, immune to subpoena, that, um, that basically the, the whole apparatus of checks and balances, which is a very real and necessary part of, of democracy, mm. um, that that no longer has any kind of meaning and the president's power is absolute. That's what really concerns Speaking me. of which, we put out a call for a working class and people's impeachment that the people had to make demands on the Congress. Is, is that happening? Um, from, from where you sit, do you not any movement? Not significantly, no. Um, mm. And I'll admit that I'm, you know, it's, I, I think it'd be great to see, and I hope we do see when this is referred to the Senate for trial, uh, protests, demonstrations, um, mass campaigns to say this, like acquittal in the Senate should not be a foregone conclusion. Um, okay. There needs to be a real 
trial. Um, but are we seeing it yet? I, I don't. I don't think so. Well, if we aren't seeing it, we need to see it. And and the Communist Party has called for uh, write a letter to your congressman, go to a protest, mm -hmm. you know, make a sign, you yep. know, um, circulate a petition, uh, honk your horn, do something to demand that Trump uh, be successfully impeached by the House and seriously tried in the, in the uh, Senate. Yep. And that's, that's really, really important. Um, what else do we got going on? There's, there's a, um, a study group taking place in, in New York, I think. In on, New York, yep. On um, Sunday, is it? Yes, I believe so. I, I forget the exact date. I got the email about it. But. OK. And so. Then, um, well, we should post a notice about it on the on the Facebook page of the party, though. Absolutely. Um, fundraising. People's yeah. World is doing some fundraising. Uh, I think this. Uh, well, People's World is, but um, we're all there's also a drive for People Before Profits mm. and the Chelsea Fund, which are um, uh, sort of uh, entities that fund uh, socialist, uh, communist educational work. Um, so uh, if you uh, were targeting it for um, Cyber Monday and Giving Tuesday, um, so show your support for the, uh, the Communist Party and for the work of, um, yeah, of, of getting out. Up in a couple of days, two days. Yep. Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday, and today is Black Friday, right? You're supposed to go out and shop till you drop. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're supposed to do, Scott? Have you gone shopping? I, I, I have not been Black Friday shopping. I almost said Good Friday shopping mm -hmm. uh, uh, in a long, long time. I, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of crowds, honestly. Bad yeah. thing for a communist. But yeah. um, so I and I, I don't really have anything that I'm looking to to get a deal on. So OK, stay home. Well, I would like to know what is the deal, speaking of deals, on the question of the week this week. Uh, for each, uh, each month, uh, the uh, website collective at uh, CPUSA, cpusa.org is sending out a question, uh, a discussion question asking for people to write in. Has that gone out yet? It has not gone up. It's going to go up today. Okay. Uh, the question of the month is, um, what does working class leadership look like in the fight against the Trump regime and the neo-Confederate right more broadly? Mm. And also, based on your experience in your club, in your district, in your organizations, how can CPUSA most effectively contribute to the political independence and political leadership of the working class in the fight for democracy? Mm, okay. So we're going to have some... Uh, reports from our national committee. Uh, Joe, your report, um, a report from uh, D on evaluation of the convention and the working class style of work. Uh, we're gonna have some materials around Lenin's essay, Two Tactics, um, which, which is really about that question of, of what is political independence for the working class and how do we get it? Um, and hopefully we'll get some, some good answers. If you have thoughts on that, please send it to discussion at cpusa.org. Um, you can send us uh, an email, you can attach a document, you can, you know, uh, make a short video or audio recording and send it to us. We'd uh, love to hear from you. Now that article, Two Tactics, that was written at the turn of the last century. Isn't the thinking a little bit out of date? I mean, the well, you know, there's, 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 capitalist there's, revolution, just to frame the, 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 the question, uh, at the beginning of, of the uh, bourgeois, what they call the bourgeois democratic revolution, um, at the beginning. And so uh, are those lessons, are those tactics put forward at the beginning back then still applicable today? Well, I think, you know, we, we do have to be careful. Obviously, you know, Lenin was, when Lenin says that the, the bourgeois democratic revolution is absolutely necessary, for the proletariat. Um, part of his thinking on that is that um, that, that 
that as capitalism develops more, um, the leftovers of serfdom will be kind of swept away. Um, uh, so, you know, we're not in a position where capitalism is underdeveloped. Um, it's ripe and Hardly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at the same time, I think there are a lot of similarities, right? So um, we have like Russia at the turn of the 20th century, we have a, an economic and social system that, that is marked by this long history of reliance on forced labor, uh, serfdom in Russia, slavery in the United States, um, whose the legacy here is still, is still present. Um, we don't have a monarchy, but we do have an increasingly autocratic regime, ultra-nationalist in character that targets um, you know, that, that targets uh, nationally oppressed people, uh, that's backed by conservative religious organizations and, and right. terrorist militias. Um, and in a certain sense, I think you could say that, that our democratic revolution here is not, it's not yet finished. Like we've had huge breakthroughs. Reconstruction was an enormous revolutionary breakthrough. The Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act were an enormous revolutionary breakthrough. Mm -hmm. But what we've seen is the, the growth of this extreme reactionary uh, section of the capitalist class that is um, that has been able to even roll back a lot of the, the gains that were made there. Well, you're talking about the democratic revolution. I thought that we were down for the socialist revolution. I mean, why the, are we the, fighting for the, the socialist revolution? revolution is the, is the 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 highest I say culminating phase what I would consider anyway of the of the democratic revolution didn't Lenin say uh, um, anyone who wants to uh, achieve socialism on any other basis than that of political democracy will invariably reach reactionary conclusions uh, well you know um, he may have uh, or may not have said it but that don't just because he said it that don't make it right sure. the question sure. is is it is it are valid, but these are issues that we want people to um, weigh in on and uh, discuss and uh, debate over the course up until um, the second week of uh, of uh, up until the second week of January. Yep, of January. Uh huh. I see. Well, great, Scott. Um, we're looking forward. I'm looking forward to. Uh, have we gotten any responses yet? I know we sent out a. The uh, letters are uh, last uh, at the beginning at, at the top of the week. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if anybody has responded yet. Uh, you know, I uh, I haven't checked the discussion email in the past couple of days. Uh, last I checked, we had not, but hopefully we will soon. And uh, there's been some some debate um, around our on our Facebook page around a, a passage that we posted from Two Tactics, saying that you know the uh, in the in the bourgeois democratic revolution. The working class can't remain aloof. It has to get involved, take leadership, and fight for working class democracy, um, consistent working class democracy, not wavering, inconsistent bourgeois democracy um, at every point in this democratic revolution. So people have, put some people like it, other people have it. doubts about it. <laughs> I like that. Put a working class stamp on it, you know? Put yeah, absolutely. It. Put yep. your name on it. All right. Well, I think that that just about does it for us uh, this week. Uh, once again, we hope everybody had a great uh, holiday yesterday if you celebrated it. If you didn't, and a lot of people don't because of the genocide that took place against indigenous Native American people in this country, we, we respect that. We honor that as well. Uh, whatever you do, we hope you'll be safe. You know, don't drink and drive, don't text and drive. Um, if you can possibly do it, don't drive. Take a bus, yes. take a plane, you know, get on the train. Um, ride your bicycle, take a walk, enjoy yourself this weekend. And we'll be back next Friday uh, with a, a new edition of this week. So thank you, Scott, and take care. Take care, Joe. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.